40 days kingdom of God. So today is uh, day number 39 and you already listened uh, 38 messages about the kingdom of God. It was really intensive and uh, with also with translation but now we decided to just speak in English together so that you can hear in English the, the, the 39. And we have the, our guest, <laughs> it's Maria Prehan. Maria, we are sitting right now in your, in your living room here, here in Uganda. Yes. And in the past, you built the kingdom of God very much. Yeah? We know that Jesus uh, spoke 40 days about the kingdom of God, 40 messages. And we, we spoke together about 38. And now we decided that you also uh, can explain us what are your secrets that God gave you in your life. What is the secret to build the kingdom of God in such a way like you did this? with 14,000 children, with uh, uh, two, uh, uh, um, uh, 300 houses you built here. So you built the kingdom of God mightily. What is the secrets in your heart that God gave you that the listeners or the people who are looking to us um, can take in their own life? Pastor Daniel is asking questions that are hard to answer in a short YouTube, but I will try. <clears throat> Yeah, there are many secrets to discover, many mysteries in the kingdom of God. And uh, to tell you the truth, the hardest for me was to find my self-acceptance. Because I was born too early, I wasn't planned, and I was the wrong sex. I should have been a boy. So that gave me for years the feeling I am not what I should be. And I tried very hard to, to be not a burden to anybody. And so I started a life of great obedience. I wanted to please everybody. I wanted to be, yeah, just not irritate anybody because my existence is soon enough irritation. And you know, now I believe that God has a plan for each one of us, a beautiful plan. And that plan he already put into you while you were in your mother's womb. In uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13, it, uh, the, the Word of God says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me, with all your heart. And dear ones, that is the secret. God is after your whole heart. Because anything that is half-heartedly done amounts to nothing. God wants you to receive his love wholeheartedly and to give your love wholeheartedly to him, the initiator and finisher of your faith. Well, I found out in these many years that we, ha we have two, we have like glasses on our soul with two lenses. One lens shows us how we see God. The other one shows us how we see ourselves. And those two lenses need to be justified. They need to be corrected in many, many lives. Because the way you see God is the way you will trust. Unless you see God as the absolute Father of love who created you to be a blessing in this world, who created you out of his love, out of his creativity. And you know, it's amazing. None of us is an accident. Every one of us is a planned, beautifully designed human being by the hand of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You can see yourself as such. And, and the other lens is how you see yourself. You know, I, I, I didn't see myself as this girl that is worthy to be loved for herself. I felt like I had to really, really work hard. And, uh, and I knew, I mean, I was, I was seeking God as an early child. I knew very early that God had a purpose for our life on earth. And I asked my mother, even as a small child, Mommy, why am I on earth for? And she had no answers to my questions. So that was my permanent search. What am I on earth for? 
what was God's plan to put me on this earth? And at the age of 19, I had a very traumatic experience. I was uh, raped by somebody I even knew. And that destroyed all my hopes that I could make a husband happy as a raped woman. And so I decided marriage was not for me, but I decided children I need. And so I became an SOS children's mother. And I was very determined to become the best mother, which I achieved. I had the reputation in Austria that I am the best SOS children's mother. I had nine children, no help, three babies. I worked like crazy, and I wanted these children to live like my own. And uh, after about three and a half years, one day, I found myself at three in the morning on the floor of my living room with my clothes on. I said, how did I get on this floor? And I realized I'm losing control of my life. And that was very shocking to me. So I felt maybe I am not putting enough effort into my life. So I went every day. In those days, I was raised in the Roman Catholic tradition. And I went every day for morning mass, very early. Of course, I had no car. I had to walk very far and walk back. By the time I came back, I could wake up the children and we could go through the day. On Good Friday of that year, I again found myself on the floor. And my first thing was that I cried out, God, I'm trying so hard. He said, yes, you're very trying. And that was, my, that was the last push the last knock in my self-made identity. You know, if God does, my whole life was good works. And if God doesn't want my good works, what I'm here for on earth, this earth, my whole foundation has been shaken. And, uh, and that was then a long way to find my identity, not in what I do or don't do, in what, what, I, what I own or don't own, to whom I belong or to whom I don't belong. I, I was... I was lost. I said, where? Who am I? And then I found out, I am not what I do for God. I am what God has done for me. And that was a tremendous transition. You know, because I was trained, you have to do a lot to get a lot. But with God, you just have to believe and receive His grace and receive that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you, on your behalf, so that you can enter into the direct contact with the Heavenly Father, not having any shame, not having any guilt, not having anything to hide from, because Jesus paid the price. And for me to understand that, this is grace, dear ones. Everything else is law, but this is grace. And when God showed me that, that was the breakthrough in my life. You know, even before I asked him, Lord, how do you see me? And he said, read uh, Song of Songs for Seven. I read that. You are my darling, and I see no blemish in you. I said, what? This is how you see me? I can help you to see my blemishes. God said, I don't need your help. I see you through the eyes of my son, Jesus Christ. And you know, that's what Paul said. I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer me who lives. It's Christ who lives in me. And the life that I live now in this body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. And that is now the biggest secret of my life. It is not what I, in my strength, can do for God, but what God has done for me. And that is a brand new way of living. And, uh, you know, he, he gave me here... Let me see, where is it? Yeah, he gave me here a word that really changed me because I was living by the law. Do, 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 don't do, don't do, don't do. But in Second Chronicles 3, 6, it says, who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. And you know, now I live Life. Life that Jesus has purchased for me on the cross. Life that he has prepared. You know, and, and it's, but it's, it's a long process, I promise you, to come out of this law thinking, 
and get into a thinking of great, of great, um, yeah, undeserved love, undeserved love. You know, and then I, I started learning from the, from the heroes of the Old Testament. Jacob was a manipulator. Peter was a coward. David had an affair. Noah got drunk. Jonah ran away from God. Moses stuttered and was impulsive. Paul was a murderer. Gideon was insecure. Miriam was a talker. Martha worried about everything. Thomas was a doubter. Sarah was impatient. Zacchaeus was small. Abraham was old and Lazarus was dead. Dear ones, they were the same material you and I are. God is not uh, calling the, 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 the qualified. He qualifies the called. And so, believe me, God put his calling already in your mother's womb. And it's there. It's in there. So just ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you for what purpose he put you on earth. What is your calling? And you will see that will open your life at dimensions in your life that you cannot imagine how satisfying life can be on earth. I told God several times, when life in heaven is going to get better, he has to work very hard. Yeah. So dear ones, we need to be set free from our limitations, from our constant bad conscience, from any lies in our lives, from any false expectations, from any knowing it better, from our past, from pushing things into the future from our worries, from fear, from the fear of man, from ourselves. You know, so long, because my whole life was just programmed, do, 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 don't do, don't do, don't do, don't do. And uh, <clears throat> even when I came to Uganda, God called me very clearly. And all I knew that God called me to be a blessing in Africa. And you know how your family reacts if a daughter in her advanced youth comes to them and says, God is calling me to Africa to be a blessing. I, I had no resources, nothing. And, uh, and they really had uh, bad plans for me, but I said, I have to go, even if I have to walk. And that is calling, dear ones. When you enter your calling, you know you cannot do anything else but. And I'm so thankful that I told them, all my family, my friends, I'm not going in opposition to you. I'm going in obedience to God. And, and it's, you know, when, when I then came and I saw all the needs, it's, it sounded to me, it looked like me like a barrel without bottom. I said, Lord, let me go back again. I said, you are not the savior of Uganda. I said, what do I do then, Lord? I felt really this big with hat. I am not the savior of Uganda, but it was releasing me. What do I do? Do every day what I tell you, what I show you. And you know, I discovered that was the secret of Jesus. He only did every day what he saw the Father doing, what he saw the Father speak, heard the Father speaking, he spoke. And this is the relationship we are to enter in a fruitful life. Because what God has prepared, he pays. What God has prepared, he finishes. What God has prepared, he gives you everything to handle the issue. You are not the initiator, you are not the finisher. God is the initiator, the finisher, but he will give you all the grace in between to do what he wants you to do. So God wants us to enter into a wide field of our destiny. We need to start believing his word, his promises, and we need to remain in him. In, in John 15, my favorite chapter, the Lord says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you shall ask what you want. It will be done unto you. Then in Matthew, Seek ye first my kingdom, my righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Then in Psalms 34, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Dear ones, God wants, doesn't want to stress us. He wants to bless us, to be a blessing. You cannot be a blessing without being blessed. But everything, you and everything you are, belongs to him. And he wants to become your first love. Your very first love. Listen, 
people that have chosen each other in marriage to be the first love in their life, besides Jesus Christ, they have no problem communicating. They have no problem knowing the desires of each other. They have no problem flowing with each other in love. And they have no problem feeling secure in each other. So when, when we are free from all these bondages that we have learned through our culture, through, you know, through our even, even studies, training, uh, and we have finally found our identity in what Jesus has done for us, then we can live our passion. We can become hilarious givers because we know our God will meet all our needs according to his riches in glory. Then we pray that God will enlarge our territory also of faith, of joy, of peace, of friendship, of faithfulness, of prayer. Dear ones, then we learn to trust our Father. He's the best. You know, he, he is crazy about you. And he loves you like his son, Jesus Christ. Then we learn to walk in the ways God has prepared, in the works God has prepared. Then we can grow wherever we are. Then we learn how to live as a child of the king, not a slave, not second grade, but a child of the king. Then we have a new, you know, we, the people say, what, what, what is with you? You're different. You know, it was not long ago, I was standing next to a man and he said, Who are you? I'm getting the goosebumps next to you. I said, Well, this is the Holy Spirit. One, even, one man even complained he has to move away from me because he starts lifting up. He says, I, 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 what, Who are you? I said, This is also the Holy Spirit. This is the presence of God. When you are in this first love with God, then you learn to respect God. You learn to wait on God. Then you are using your tongue to speak blessings for yourself and for your fellow man. Then you depend on the blood of Jesus. Then you are thankful and positive. Dear ones, and then you know God never makes a mistake. God knows the end from the beginning. And God has good plans for your life. Trust him with all your heart. If I have to put my life together in two words, it's trust me. God is constantly telling me, even if I don't understand it, I don't want it, I don't like it, trust me. Because for those that trust me, that obey me, even the worst things will work together for good. I tell you, God loves you. God cares for you. But surrender yourself completely. Declare your bankruptcy in your own strength before God and receive Christ as your very life, as your life, as your joy, as your peace, as your wisdom, as your help, as your joy, as your beauty, as your satisfaction. Christ in us, the hope of glory. That is the secret to life. Not I, myself, and me, Lord bless us three. This is self-centered. The right attitude is Christ in me, the hope of glory. I love you. Bless you. Shalom.